Welcome to this video. This is going to be a verbal tutorial on how to make a piston. I'm going to go ahead and get started by getting normal to my top plane and I'll draw a circle to represent the diameter of the piston. In this case, I'll, let's say if I have a 3 inch bore, I'll make this 2.99 and I'll give it an extrusion. I'll give it a three inch extrusion. That's a bit tall. I'll go with the two inch extrusion. That's not too bad. And then I'll use an extruded cut to hollow out the inside of the piston. So I'll just get normal to the plane and sketch on this face. From here, um, I'll do a dimension to determine the thickness of the walls of the piston. And let's say I want them to be 0.45 inches thick. Oh, that's kind of thick. Let's go with 0.5. Yeah, that's not too bad. And I'll extrude the piston. Oh, but I want to do an extruded cut. And instead of the full two inches, I'll do um, 1.7 to create a consistent thickness throughout. At this point, um, I will. Uh, it, it can be handy to add some fillets here and on these faces to smooth things out, but since fillets can interfere with changes that you might need to make later on. I like to add fillets last. They can be temperamental sometimes. As for right now, I'll do a section view and cut this piston right in half and get normal to that with control 8. From here, I'll do a sketch on this plane and I'll make a, I'll do a revolve cut for piston rings. So all I'll do right here Let's make a square. And how deep into the piston do I want these rings to go? A tenth of an inch is fine, as far as what I care about. And I'll do another tenth of an inch. And then I'll set this edge. If I can't get normal to this outer edge, then I will. I should say if I can't get collinear with this outer edge, I'll say 0, I'm sorry, 2.99 and divided by 2 since we're working with the radius. And this line will sit collinear with this wall now. And then how high up do I want it? Um, higher up piston rings are great for emissions. Lower piston rings are great for performance. So there's a balance there. I'll do higher up environmentally friendly piston rings. Let's say, what does 1.75 look like? It gives us about a quarter inch from the top. It's not bad. Then I will simply do a linear pattern on the sketch. Linear pattern, these components. And I'll do it in the uh, Y axis. So I'll set this to one. And I, I'm, I'm going to do three piston rings, which is pretty standard, and I'll make them each yeah, a third. Oh, 0.3 inches looks pretty good. And then I'll just add a few dimensions to ensure that they're fully defined, even though we know what dimensions they are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's what it is. So I'll make a relation between these three lines and say that they're collinear and that should fully define the sketch. Okay, uh, with this line I'll specify that as a revolved cut. There it is. And I have places for piston rings to go. Now I'll add a, a hole for my wrist pin, and to do that I'll sketch on a plane. 
uh, front plane looks good and I'll choose a circle and I'll make the center of that circle vertical with the origin and I'll have this sit say half an inch above the bottom and I want this to be say 0.4 inches thick not bad features extruded cut through all on both sides and cut and there we have a uh, part for the wrist pin <clears throat> at this point um, if you're dealing with tighter tolerances or um, whatever you're designing this for you may want to make the bottom of the piston circular and that way when it meets the crankshaft it can sit pretty tight on the top of the crankshaft and have a really nice fit and that way you can minimize the length of your connecting rod as much as possible so to do that I'll do a three-point arc and I'll connect it from one side to the other this three-point arc would be beneficial to match the radius that the crankshaft travels around for a nice tight fit simply do a line from here to here and I'll just choose an arbitrary radius since I don't have an existing crankshaft or connecting rod and four inches is way too tight for that so I'll go 3.25 oh, worse still let's try six inch that looks that looks all right and again features extruded cut through all on both sides and you have a circular bottom on the piston now finally let's uh, let's talk about the top of the piston let's say we want to add some squish area there are four different ways that air travels in the combustion chamber the first is squish which is as the piston rises there are there are some volumes that decrease faster than other volumes and so it kind of squishes the air into a volume where you can get a really stratified mixture of air fuel right by the spark plug so squish area is one you have tumble which is air moving this way like a tumble dryer if you turn that tumble motion sideways you have swirl which is this way in the combustion chamber and you have turbulence which is normally you don't want turbulence on anything that flows but it can be beneficial in a combustion chamber to help atomize the fuel uh, so I'm gonna put some squish area and that will help bring a lot of the air and fuel to the center of the piston for a very concentrated burn I'm going to section view once again and get normal to that view and start sketching on that front plane what I'm going to do is I'll put a three-point arc on this edge if it will let me I might have to dimension that and I can choose an arbitrary radius I'll go with one inch radius will sit kind of flat maybe half inch again when you're working with an actual combustion chamber it'll be a little bit easier 0.4 looks fine and I can do a revolved boss base to add material around a specific line And that will add oh, that's still a little bit flat so I think what I'll do is uh, go back to my sketch let's try a 0.75 up oh, I should have said a 0.25 it's still tall 
Just get it to how you want it. Rebuild. That's not a bad squish area there. Uh, and again, add fillets as you go. I like to do them at the end because they can be tricky when you change something and rebuild the part. Um, you can have some extra supports inside the piston. That's not very common, especially on OE pistons, but um, some high performance have a support that goes through the middle. So I'll go ahead and build that. What I'll do there is sketch on this face and I'll make a rectangle. I'll add some relations to fully define the sketch. Inch looks good. Maybe an inch by 0 0.4. It's kind of thick. Again, I'm not designing this for a specific engine. If you've got a specific engine, be more exact with not besides eyeballing it. So I'll go 0 0.4 again. That looks good. And I'll extrude that. If you know in advance that you need one of these, um, you can build this before you do your extruded cut, so it'll cut through these automatically as well, but that'll be pretty easily rectified. I'm going to reduce this length. Let me find a view that works. That shouldn't be too bad. That will not make contact with the bottom of the piston and so we're safe from the crankshaft. At this point I might want to round out these edges so I will add a fillet. Now I can have a round view of everything that's going on. And at this point I'll mirror some of the features. You don't have to do things in the order that I do. It's all up to you. You're the engineer. From here, it has me mirroring the fillet, so I'll give that a body to mirror as well. And I have that mirrored. So I'll find the central plane. Again, you can do this part before you mirror it if you want. And I'll Just recreate the extruded cut that I originally had. Okay, fully defined. Features, extruded cut, and through all on both sides. Excellent. Uh, we have a pretty rigid piston and especially I'd be concerned with this edge right here. Sharp edges often uh, accumulate heat on a piston. So you want to mitigate those sharp edges as much as possible. And that's why I add a fillet here and here. Oh, here and on this edge here. This is too big for this edge, so I'll... That looks about right. Nice smooth edges will help disperse any thermal stress going through the part. And then I'll uh, add some fillets down here. This clearly isn't the best without a fillet. Um, sharp edges also have stress concentrations when you uh, put stress into a part. So I'll just do a fillet all the way around. I'll add another fillet around here. And finally some fillets on these faces. You don't have to do them all the same radius. In fact, this one I'm going to go a bit smaller. There we go. And there we have a 
basic piston. You can add some fillets for the piston rings too if you would like as well. Uh, this is as far as I'm going to take it. Uh, in fact, I don't know if I did this in the other video, the quiet one, but I will just in case someone was wondering about this. You can put a pin in here to hold the wrist pin. There's several methods used and I'll do a section view as an example. So our wrist pin would be going through here. And what I'm going to do is sketch and start dimensioning. You don't need anything too dramatic because just a little pin is going to go in there. I'll go 0 0.07. Again, you're going to have to look for what kind of stresses you're dealing with and, and everything else so that you can know the appropriate measurements and tolerances to put on these things. From here, I can't get coincident to anything, so I'll use my smart dimension. and that should be running through the center. From this point I know that it was a point four diameter circle so this should be a straight point too. Finally I can a little bit of unorthodox constraining I'll just make these two lines equal and that should fully define everything. There we go. So I'll do a revolved cut. And I'll make this my center point. And that's how you can make a nice channel for a pin to go in that will hold in the wrist pin. Again, you can move this forward, backward, however you want because um, you can design it for specifically what you want it for. This is just a general principle video on how to make a piston. Nothing too particular. I'll mirror these features across the front plane. And end my section view. And there we have um, some of the features that you'll need to make a piston modify um, your design to fit your needs as necessary. If this video was helpful, please subscribe and I'll catch you next time.